Hello, I wanted to make this video because I searched all over YouTube and couldn't find any help on how to replace the drive belts on this Troy built tractor. It's the one that's, um, well, here's the number on it on the bottom of the seat. 128473 is the model number. And it's got, uh, just two gears on it, forward and reverse, with the uh, pedal that makes it go faster and slower right there, and a brake. So this is what it looks like from a distance. And here is the mower deck that I took out. Uh, I did a little bit more than I had to. I'm just figuring this out as I go along. This one I did not need to uh, take off. I'm, this is the rear looking forward right now. So I didn't have to take off that right side cover, just the left side. It's only got what? One, two, three self-tapping screws on it. And then uh, all you have to do is um, get to this thing right here with the ratchet. And that's the tensioner. You um, relieve the tension on the belt take the belt off, and then um, you pull these two pins. Just do a quarter turn up or down, I guess. Probably down is just as good as up. One on each side, and that will um, free the mower deck, and you can pull it out. I had a little bit of trouble because there's a bar that you'll probably see later that was in here that comes out very easily, but it just kept getting hung up on that. So, uh, pulled that out. To the, uh, the pulleys off of the crankshaft. This was on there, and this is where that, um, the belt went around from the mower deck. So I took the, the screw out of the crankshaft right here. This thing just dropped down. You gotta be real careful, have something to put that on because the wires um, are not that long and you don't want them to hang and this thing's kinda heavy. So make sure you have something to put your, I think that's a clutch, to put the clutch on. And then that just left this, and mine is rusted on there, so I had to do a little bit of Mickey Mouse engineering here. And uh, I just went ahead and I bent these tabs back. I know that's Mickey Mouse. I don't usually do Mickey Mouse, but that's all I could do. So I bent those out to be able to get the, get the belt out of there. You can see that, I hope. And that was kind of tough to do. I had to use these uh, duckbill pliers. They're vice grips. And I got them up in there and bent them that way. Kind of like this. You can see that, I hope. That's how I did that. bent them out and I'm going to bend them back the same way when I'm putting the new belt on. In order to give me room to work to uh, Mickey Mouse these things is I removed that from there and I don't know if you saw that from there and the same thing from the other side to uh, just give me room to be able to work in here with uh, with these pliers otherwise I couldn't um, couldn't swing it far enough so had to remove this little bracket right here it's just got two screws that went right there I removed that for the same reason to be able to have room to swing this to bend those tabs out the of the tractor way. and um, once I got the belt out from there I fished it through here I had to squeeze it through right there I had to squeeze it through there and uh, pull.
pulled it back through there and there was a little standoff right here. It was up inside there that I had to uh, take off, or maybe it was one of these holes. I had to take that off so that the belt would uh, come through this way, pulled it out there, and uh, I actually took a picture of the bottom side so I would remember how I, they fit through the two pulleys there. And uh, next I'm gonna go to the back side and take that all off. And that top belt off, that frees up the bottom belt because as you can see with the top belt gone, this thing floats. And then you can lift that up and pull the bottom belt out through there. Just like that. And there's another one on the other side you'll have to get free also. There just so you can see what it looks like. Uh, you can see the nuts gone. The reason you have to take that off even though that pulley back there is uh, on a spring, it's a tensioner, is because there's not enough room between the the uh, pulley there and the frame to get that um, belt off. So even though you can get slack on it by pulling on the spring-loaded pulley there, you'll still have to take that pull, that uh, this pulley off. And then like I said, there's the one that floats so you can get the bottom belt off. It turns out I'm going to have to move remove this whole pulley assembly right there because there's not enough room to get the, the belt out between the pulley and the frame of the tractor. So, it looks fairly easy. Just gonna remove this screw and this one right there. That, this one, and this one, not this one. So you don't remove that, but you remove this one and this one, and that will free up that pulley, I hope. We'll see. Okay, that worked. What I did was I took out, let me see if we can see this here. You can see the hole there, I took one out, and then the, the forwardmost bolt right there, See? right there um, I just loosened it and that gave me the slack I needed to be able to get that thing out so you can see it's it's in there still but loose and I didn't want to remove the whole thing it's just gonna be easier to put back together when I only have to align one bolt hole and that got the um, Hand belt or the belt out, and voila, there it is. So uh, now it's all just being put back together. Now I'm just going to put everything back together in reverse order, but I also wanted to make sure that I had the right belts because the worst thing that you can do, I think, is get it all back together and then it doesn't work because the belts were too short or too long. So. I did stretch these out with, my, with two hands. They're good. Same thing with this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble everything in reverse order and I'll document that on video as well. One other thing I wanted to let you know is that I went ahead and bought the OEM belts. Uh, they weren't that much more expensive and when I read reviews on um, people that had bought the aftermarket belts. Um, sometimes they were too short. That drive belt, if it's too short, um, it won't disengage and you won't be able to stop the tractor. It'll just start driving. So um, I just decided to spend the extra money and get OEM. Uh, I bought them at two different times because I didn't realize there was two belts in there. Um, so the first time I bought one belt from Troy Built and it turns out Tractor Supply also sold the Troy Built belt for cheaper than you could get it from Troy Built. So 
I bought the longer one from them. Okay, I've gone ahead and fed the, the belt back through there. I wanted to make sure I got it all routed correctly before I put any screws back in or tightened anything. So uh, that's still loose right there. I ran the belt through there. Right there. Come around to the left side. belt coming from the back run up through here of course I had to refer to my pictures so I'm glad I took them and then all the way back up to the front pulley again and once I get it all done I'm gonna bend those tabs back again okay I've put the rear screw back in and tighten the front screw. So now the pulley is nice and tight in there. Of course, I put the belt on first, which was the reason for taking the pulley loose in the first place was to get the belt out. So make sure you put the belt on before you tighten those screws. Next step is put that pulley on and you want to put the belt on the pulley also first before you put the pulley on otherwise you won't be able to get it on okay i've got the pulley in place you can see the belt is on that's the part that uh, is close to the frame there so you gotta put the belt on and then the pulley and make sure you align that star-shaped uh, grooves there before you put your nut on. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the nut on and tighten it. I also wanted to show you how I kept that from turning when I was tightening the nut because it, it does just uh, freely turn. So that's a screwdriver I put through the hole and you just tighten the nut. Okay, the nut is on and I've got the screwdriver stuck through the hole there to keep the pulley from turning when I Tighten the nut. Okay, the nut is tight. Last step for the rear part of the tractor is to um, pull on that pulley right there. It's spring-loaded and just get the belt over that pulley and we'll be good for the backside. Okay, that belt is in. Uh, that was kind of tough to pull that pulley that's uh, the forward most pulley there because the spring is kind of tough so I ended up having to put my arm uh, the left arm in this hole like this and my right arm through the wheel well and um, used my right hand to put the pulley or I'm sorry the uh, the belt over the pulley So I've, um, again, my left hand was through the battery hole. My right hand was right through this hole on the left rear, I'm sorry, the right rear tire and used my thumb to put the belt over the pulley while I pulled the pulley towards me with my left hand. So that was kind of tough, but I got it. Okay, I'm back to underneath the uh, tractor. Next thing I'm going to do is put this standoff back in that uh, I had taken off to help me get the, the belt out, the, the long dry belt. And that goes up in, see I'm on the left side of the tractor, it goes up in this little hole right here. I'm going to do that off camera because it takes two hands, but you got to make sure though that when you put that in that you uh, keep this belt here on the other side of that hole, like that. See how it went across the hole? Because that standoff keeps it tight against this pulley right here. So you wanna make sure that the belt is not like that when you put the standoff in, but rather like that. Okay, this is what it looks like installed. And as you can see, the belt 
is on the inside of that standoff. And it keeps it tight against that pulley there. Okay, the belt is basically in. And the next step is I'm going to bend those tabs back straight down. Those are the ones I bent out to be able to get that belt off the pulley there. So I'll go ahead and do that, and then I'll come back. All right, as you can see, I've got those tabs bent back the way they should be. And that keeps the the, the belt captive in there. Keeps it from jumping the, the pulley there. Going to, the next thing I'm going to do is just hook up this steering linkage, put that on there, and same thing on the other side, right there. So this will go there, and this one goes here. I'll come back when that's done. Okay, I've got the linkage loosely hooked up. Um, I had to move the steering wheel in order to uh, get those things lined up. And uh, sometimes it was a little bit of a tight fit, so I got it started. And then I had to take this socket, put it on there like that, and then just tap it with a hammer get it up there because it's kind of a tight fit through that bushing. So I'll go ahead and put the other nut on and tighten them both and come back. Okay, I'm over on the right side of the tractor again. Uh, I'm just going to put this thing back on. It goes just like that with two screws. It's a real easy thing. I'll put that on and just to, as a reminder, that that I'm putting back on in the last uh, thing I did, which was the linkage, those things. I only took those off to give me room to uh, bend those tabs again. So if you can get that pulley off without having to bend the tabs, then that's uh, steps that you'll save. So in other words, if that pulley just comes off or you have a puller, you can get it off somehow, then uh, these last two things I did, you don't have to do the linkage, and this bracket. The next thing I'm going to do is put this clutch back on, and um, as you can see, it's uh, keyed. There's a keyway right there, and that's got to align with the uh, groove in the crankshaft. Right there, that groove right there. So uh, it only goes on one way. And I've got two washers. My parts list only shows one, but two came out, so I'm putting two back on. And then the uh, bolt has a lock washer under the head. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on. Okay, here's something that I just learned the hard way, because I got it up there and had to take it back down. So this keyway, was clocked about six o'clock, if you consider the wire here 12. And uh, this groove here has to uh, engage into a bracket up underneath that I'll show you later. But in order for that to happen, this keyway's gotta be offset, and I'm just estimating here, by about that much, maybe maybe five o'clock, and uh, it's just gonna take some trial and error to get that thing clocked correctly, because once you get it up high enough for that to engage in the slot in the crankshaft, by then it's uh, you can't turn it um, because the bracket that it has to engage starts hitting right here. So it's gotta be all aligned before you put it up, basically. So if it doesn't 
work the first time, you have to bring it back down and clock that thing until it's correct. So here I go. I'm going to try it and uh, keep trying until I get it. Okay, I just got it aligned and then I brought it back down so I could uh, show you the offset. So the wires are at the top at 12 o'clock and that keyway is about, what is that, about 5 o'clock maybe. So it's just trial and error. And here's why that matters. So there's the whole assembly right there. And that groove I showed you earlier has to go in between this bracket right there. So that's why you have to have it clocked because this thing only goes one way. As this has to be clocked that way to go up onto this bracket. So that keyway has to be clocked correctly for however the uh, crankshaft is. And now that I'm saying this, I realize it's not going to be the same for you because it, uh, it just matters however your engine stopped and wherever that keyway slot is on your crankshaft. So you're just going to have to align that yourself. Uh, mine happened to be, the keyway slot just happened to be uh, directly pointing to the rear of the tractor. Six o'clock. So that's why the slot or the key the keyway was actually clocked at about five o'clock for me. Probably won't be the same for you though. So the next step is to uh, put the uh, the deck back in. Oh, one last thing. Don't forget to tighten that uh, bolt on the flywheel there. And I'm going to use an air impact driver because uh, there's really no way to uh, keep the engine from turning if you're just going to use a ratchet or something. And so this will uh, this will tighten it up. Hopefully you've uh, got something like that or can figure out a way to keep the engine from turning if you don't. For this next step, uh, which is going to be putting the deck back in, I'm going to go ahead and um, take the tractor off of blocks because that'll get the uh, the tractor closer to the um, to the deck. That way I don't have to be lifting it up very high to get it back engaged. So I'll be taking uh, this back down to the ground right now. Change of plans. I'm going to go ahead and drive it before I put the deck on just uh, to give it an ops check and make sure it all works good in case I have to take it apart in case I did something wrong. So before I do that, I'm going to take this little thing off so it doesn't get caught or anything while I'm driving and it's just simple cotter pins, one on each side. Took that one out of there. I'm going to take this one out and uh, the pins should be right on out. And it's ready to drive after I put the battery in. Okay, I'm gonna put the battery tray back in real quick. That thing just goes right in here. It's kinda of hard to do with one hand, but... There we go. Just like that. And uh, then the battery. my tractor the things go on the right side and uh, positive is forward so I'll go ahead and hook that up and give it a test drive okay I'm back from the test drive it tested well everything worked as it should so I'm about to put this deck back in now I went ahead and put the right cover back on because I didn't really need to take it off. The only thing you need to get into in there is make sure that the, that the uh, belt stays engaged into that pulley, but I can do that with the cover on. So I went ahead and put that side on. The left side I left off because um, that I have to 
engage the uh, belt into the flywheel pulley that we just put on in a couple of steps earlier. So um, I'll go ahead and put that on. Basically, it's just uh, sliding it under there. I'm going to engage each pin there and there. Put the uh, belt back onto the flywheel. This is the tensioner, as I said before. And um, put a ratchet or a breaker bar or something in here to uh, give it enough slack to uh, get that over the uh, flywheel. Uh, what I did do, by the way, while I had it out is I cleaned this up a little bit. I wasn't too worried about all the dirt because I just use this for mowing weeds and so it gets dirty the very first time I'm out again. But uh, there's also a, I noticed a zerk fitting there. So if you're so inclined and you have a grease gun, you could grease that. And um, that's about it. I'll go ahead and do that and um, we'll see how that goes. Oh, by the way, this would also be a good time to change out your belt if you've never done it before. I didn't because mine's fairly new. Um, and I, uh, I did check it while I've got this out and there's no cracks. Um, it looks like it's got a lot of life left in it, so I didn't. But uh, while you've got this thing out, I mean, you can replace this uh, belt with the uh, deck on, but um, if it needs to be replaced, it certainly is easier while it's out. Okay, I've got the deck under there. It's not hooked up yet. In order to hook it up, it's just a few more steps. You can see there's this hole right here, and that's where this pin goes. So I'm gonna have to lift that up a little bit to be able to engage the pin. There's another one on the other side. Make it easier on yourself. Make sure that you're uh, on your lowest setting there so that little rod right there will be down as far as it can go. And uh, I'm gonna hook those up. I'm gonna hook that thing back up that I took off to um, do the test drive and hook the belt up. We'll see how that goes. So it turns out, so it turns out the, um, the deck is a little bit heavy. So um, in order to uh, make it easier on myself, I stuck this breaker bar underneath the deck. And with my left hand, I just lift it up on it like this. And that just helped me align it with that hole over there. And uh, when it was aligned, then I just um, pulled back and turned on this thing to let it go through the hole and it engaged that right there, this thing. So I'll go ahead and do that on the other side. I also wanted to point out too that uh, you want to pull that pin out and then uh, clock it so that it um, that this part hits the bracket right there. That way it holds it open, and then this thing can just uh, you can align it with the hole and then pull this thing out again and twist it down and it'll engage the hole. That's what it looks like when it's finished. This thing is down and you probably can't see it, but that, uh, that pin has gone through the hole. And now you can adjust your height with the handle. Next thing is to get the, uh, the belt all put on this way and engaged onto the pulley there. And again, I'm gonna do that with a ratchet and uh, make sure that your spring is engaged on that, like that. Can you see it? Yeah. And I'm um, gonna engage that, put that bar back on and we'll be done. Okay, I've got that back on. It's just a pin and a cotter pin. And then it engages 
the deck like that. sides and then one more last step is just put the cover on three bolts we're done promise this time and we're done the covers on uh, I hope this video helped you like I said I couldn't find anything on YouTube for this model and the difference was uh, there was a lot of similar models, but none of them had this uh, this clutch on the um, that we installed here on the crankshaft. All the ones I could find just had the straight pulley there, and uh, I didn't know how to get the, the the belt off of there. Turns out I had to bend those tabs, and I know that's not the right way to do it, but. I didn't have a puller or anything, so that's how I ended up doing it. It worked out just fine. So again, I hope this helped you out, and um, we'll talk to you later.